Well, no one could say they weren't warned. Warning signs were there all along. It started months ago when Jair Bolsonaro, the right-wing populist then-president of Brazil, claimed with zero evidence that there was an electoral steal underway, that the voting machines could not be trusted. Now, Bolsonaro and Donald Trump are big fans of each other. Even their kids are friendly. Bolsonaro's son, Eduardo, posted this picture with Donald Trump Jr. at a Las Vegas gun show in 2018. He and his family even visited the White House on the eve of the American insurrection, January 5th, 2021, posting this picture with Ivanka Trump. The elders Trump and Bolsonaro have a lot in common, from their right-wing politics to the way they both treated the coronavirus while in office to the unfounded claims of vote stealing in their respective elections. So it's unsurprising that there were blaring warnings that Bolsonaro was winding up his supporters exactly the same way Trump was. And when Bolsonaro lost, like Trump, he didn't concede. He quietly authorized a transition and then basically fled the country. He spent Inauguration Day, when he was supposed to be passing the presidential sash to his successor, in Trump's home state of Florida, where he's been for a while, spending time at a KFC restaurant in Orlando, and recently being admitted to an area hospital for abdominal pain related to the stabbing he suffered at a campaign event in 2018. But this past Sunday, one week after that inauguration that Bolsonaro was absent from, a right-wing pro-Bolsonaro mob stormed the Brazilian capital in scenes that eerily mirrored the U.S. Capitol two years ago. Look at that. The Brazilian version of the infamous QAnon shame was even featured at a Brazilian Independence Day rally in 2021, shouting support for Bolsonaro. But what happened on Sunday as the mob marauded through the government buildings in Brasilia was more than symbolic resonance. The Washington Post reports that after losing the election, Bolsonaro's son sought advice from former Trump advisor Steve Bannon and Jason Miller. There are notable differences, however, in the two riots. The first is that in Brazil, they were a little late. The transfer of power had already happened. In fact, it was a Sunday, and lawmakers and officials were at home. Their offices were closed, so they were not terrified for their lives. There was, they were not there for the mob to delay or attempt to stop some kind of process. That had happened. The other incredibly striking difference, one I just can't quite get over, is how the day in Brasilia ended compared to how it happened in Washington, D.C. In the U.S., just about everyone who stormed the Capitol were able to just leave. Many went back to their hotel lobbies to revel in what they'd done and post their Instagram videos. But what you are seeing here is what the end of the day looked like in Brazil, where police got their act together and made hundreds of arrests that day, marching the perpetrators back down the very ramp they used to invade the seat of government. Brazil's new president, Lula, promised to bring those responsible to justice, as roughly a 1,000 Bolsonaro supporters have been so far arrested in connection with the violence. Even the local governor of the state that Brazil is in was suspended by a Brazilian Supreme Court justice on allegations of abetting the riot. He's a big Bolsonaro supporter. And maybe if the U.S. can export this model of attempted authoritarian coup to Brazil... Well, then perhaps Brazil can export back a model of real accountability for the perpetrators and the planners.